What is currently happening, programs? Welcome to The Grid VR, where I'll be bringing you this week's news in virtual reality. It's Sunday, the 4th of November, 2018, and all I can say this week is, click me, click me. We've got Pimax pre-orders, white FOV for your head, Oculus Rift 2, not gonna be dead, Red Dead Redemption, maybe dead red, the Tetris Effect, Black Friday deals, Blade Sorcery Swords, and much more. Today, I'm gonna cover off the main events to keep you in the loop. So stay locked, enjoy, and welcome to The Grid VR. Pimax pre-orders have gone live with more options and uncertainty on the table than an insecure poker player with six hidden cards and nothing but actual potato chips. For starters, the site lists three headsets including the 5K Business Edition, the 5K Plus and the ill-named 8K, not 8K. The 5K Plus has two 2560 by 1440 custom low persistence panels with an RGB stripe pixel layout using rectangular pixels, which means no more pain about screen door effect. So that was lucky. Also 7.5 million sufficient pixels because anything less would be insufficient and more contrast and colour brighten the every pixel of the screen. <laughs> Love it. This headset will feature the famed 120, 150 and 200 degree field of view modes, a 90hz refresh rate, an audio jack for headphones, built-in mic, a hardware IPD adjustment, and support for Valve's Lighthouse 1 and 2.0 tracking systems, with the headset only landing at 700 bucks, which makes it cheaper than a Vive Pro. The 5K Business Edition, on the other hand, has those same specs, with the exception of OLED panels, a slightly lower 85Hz give or take refresh rate, and a higher $1000 price tag due to those OLED panels, which means no more pain about. Then the 8K has most of the same features as the 5K Plus, though it will rock to 3840 by 2160 displays fed by that same size native input resolution, so good luck running that, albeit at a lower still 80Hz refresh rate and a $900 price tag. And to be clear, no, the 8K is not 8K for a few reasons. Those are essentially two 4K panels and the total pixel count of 8 8K is not 4K plus 4K, it's more like 4 times 4K screens. B, 8K refers to a single panel's horizontal resolution and the Pimax has two panels, not one. And C, because of the way your eyes converge and your vision overlaps at such close distances, you don't see anywhere near 8K horizontally anyways, more like 4 to 5K. So whichever way you literally look at it, no. Also keep in mind the these prices are the headset only. To fill out a complete working kit, you'll need Vive Wands and Lighthouse sensors of your own already. Or you can pre-order the Pimax controller and Valve Lighthouse 2.0 sensor bundles in varying thumbstick or trackpad configurations, which cost a $300 deposit. Does that mean $300 now and more later? And how much more later? Or does it mean pay now, receive much later once production is done? Either way, given the delays on the headset themselves and the lack of details, I definitely wouldn't recommend pre-ordering the controller bundles, though the hybrid touch wandicles do look suave on screen. There's a few bundles on offer including one with a Zotac RTX 2080 and one with the RTX 2080 card from Colourful. Eh. There's headsets with the built-in leap motion like hand tracking module, though you will need games or apps that support that feature, so like none really. Outside of social VR apps like Altspace and the headset should work with Oculus exclusive games thanks to Pimax's own Revive-esque software. So what's the bottom line with these Pimax headsets? Well, the 5K Plus running in the 150 degree field of view mode seems to be the best setup and a GTX 1070 should run lighter titles on that fine, though a 1080 Ti rarely is the comfortable minimum from what I've read. If if you want the full 200 degree field of view mode, you'll be needing a 2080 Ti for most titles at least to get a decent experience. Though that could all be a different story with Pimax's Brain Warp technology, which is a version of ASW by Oculus or Motion Smoothing by Valve. Though 
the Pimax won't utilise either of those and we are yet to see Brain Warp in action. All up, and despite the fact I'm having a light English laugh at their Chinese expense, it's great to see these headsets come to fruition and it will be interesting to see if they do actually shake up the industry. If you're willing to take the plunge, wait a little, and field of view is what matters to you, then the Pimax 5K Plus headset sounds to me like a solid little buy. The Samsung Odyssey Plus is out and features an anti-SDE AMOLED technology that reduces the screen door effect to almost unseeable levels. Dual 1600 by 1440 AMOLED displays, 110 degree diagonal field of view, which is the same as Rift and Vive, improved comfort, an ultralight 590 gram form factor, hardware IPD adjustment wheel, better material and wider nose guard that actually lets you breathe through your nose this time around, a detachable front pad, built-in dual array microphones and high quality built-in AKG surround sound headphones which provide spatial audio. There's also Bluetooth connectivity to the controllers, the expected super simple PC setup you'd expect from all the WMR headsets, inside out tracking so no external sensors and a very cool real world portal flashlight feature that lets you see the world around you while you're in VR. Gotta be honest this looks really good and if you have the budget and want a WMR headset this is definitely the one to get. If games like Echo Arena are your thing though, you're still better sticking to a Rift or Vive due to the better tracking on those systems. But with Samsung stepping up like this and Pimax potentially hitting the market, it is getting tougher to recommend those now two plus year old headsets. Links are in the description if you want to know more about the Odyssey Plus. An article from TechCrunch earlier in the week claimed that the Rift 2 had been cancelled citing that was the reason that Brendan Iribe, the co-founder of Oculus, left Oculus this week. Following the TechCrunch article, a writer for Variety then said that Facebook said the Rift 2 cancellation was untrue, nor was it the reason iRibe left Oculus. Then the TechCrunch writer said that there would be a future version of Rift, but not the high-end PC VR headset named Casper, which was planned. Instead, a Rift revision, potentially called the Rift S, would take its place. A headset with improved optics, but with inside-out tracking like the Oculus Quest. More on that in this video here. Instead of the Rift's constellation tracking. Then I said, what the f*** are you all smoking? So essentially a Quest headset that connects to a PC right after Quest is released with higher resolution but inferior tracking than a Rift? Like an upgrade and a simultaneous downgrade? Why would that work? If it did, then all the WMR headsets would be the dominant VR HMDs on the market. They're not. Wanna know what I think? I think the Rift does need a revision. I think a glorious Gen 2 Rift is still going ahead at some point. I think increasing resolution but reducing tracking would be a mistake and I think you can potentially claim anything in an article and I think that article got a fuck ton of clicks. As a side note, this is potentially the last thing I'll ever say on the Grid VR. And briefly, Ben Walker over at rockstarintel.com has found in the Red Dead Redemption 2 companion apps files a ton of references to a PC version of the game forthcoming. Included in that list is this most excellent entry labelled Param Oculus. Now this could mean a lot of things. It could be VR support, a VR game mode or just some stray files. But for the purpose of this video it means that Red Dead Redemption 2 has been cancelled. Shit, it's already out. Well, whatever this is, after Upload VR spoke to Joel Breton, the head of HTC Vive Studios, that Rockstar are not done with VR after their LA Noir VR Stories release. And you can see more slapstick dick drawing info on that one in this video here. Whatever the case, it is very suggestive nonetheless. The app files, that is, not the dick drawing. Dick drawing 2 has been cancelled. Tetris Effect is 
Tetris in VR. Surprise, motherfucker! But with encapsulating visuals and sweeping side-chained electro-synth audio dreams that expand the experience beyond the rotatable blocks which the experience is centred on. Produced by Tetsuya Mizuguchi, whose accolades also include Res Infinite, Luminous, Child of Eden, and Space Channel 5, which is also another now retro game coming to VR that you can see more about in this episode of The Grid VR. A free demo of the Tetris effect is live on the PSVR store right now until this Monday, the 5th of November, where the full game will hit the shelves four days later on November the 9th. There's also a link to the mini documentary in the description of this video that delves into the Tetris effect as a real condition, where your brain, after being used in one specific way for long periods of time, blurs those experiences into your everyday reality. In the case of Tetris the game specifically, people find they try to fit things into place through optimizing and organizing the ordinary and extraordinary shapes they see in day-to-day -day life. I'm sure we can all relate and it's worth a watch. Zero Calibre, the military FPS game, has a free demo up for the next week until the early access release on the 9th of November. The demo has a couple of stages you can work through as well as a handful of the weapons that will be available in the full release. I really like the gun mechanics in this game and how they handled, especially when it came to my favourite weapon, the Snipper Riffle. This one will be a co-op and PvP single, multi or online multiplayer tactical shooter available for the Rift, Vive and WMR headsets. So check the link in the description below if you want to have a shot at the free demo. Accounting Plus, the smash hit office sim from Ricky Gervais, Squanch Games and Crows 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 has attached itself to the hull of PC VR this week. In this game, you'll be able to stack blocks, first person shoot your way through jelly, remove a limb and beat a mother with another mother flog my red dead horse, click my link, pre-order loot box, have a lucky palmer, just as a quick disclaimer, you literally can't do any of those things, but click my link in the description to click my link. Warp Frog, a one-man dev team, is building a built for VR, physics-driven, melee, ranged and magic combat game called Blade and Sorcery. There's small sandbox arenas and maps with waves of enemies that you can smash, stab and and violate in physically accurate ways for that extra satisfaction. Though that doesn't mean I'm a serial killer just because I like to virtually serial kill things. So like a wave shooter, but with blades and sorcery. And did I mention realistic physics that are missing from top tier games? The game will hit early access in December and you can get hold of beta giveaway keys via the Discord channel, which I'll link in the description below. A Lemmings-like title for VR with Toy Box Charm is coming next week from the ex-developers of Lionhead Studios, which was also responsible for the black and white god games back in the early noughties. If you're a Lemmings fan, then get set to guide 10 soldiers to safety in this charming puzzler set in a magical world with heartfelt vibes. Tin Hearts will hit early access on November the 9th on Steam and the Oculus Store, and there's links in the description for you to see what's in the box. Amidst a ton of Black Friday leaks, the target one in particular is showing $100 off the Creed and Superhot PSVR bundle, landing it at $249 with headset, move controllers, and those games. And if you look closely, it says save $100 on all PSVR bundles. So this is hopefully the opportunity I've been waiting for to grab the Moss and Astrobot bundle. There's also a PS4 deal with Spider-Man if you are needing to complete the entire setup. My advice is if you want to avoid buyer's remorse, don't buy shit over the next few weeks until Black Friday rolls around and then see what's what. Also, IMAX closed another one of its VR centers in New York last week, leaving four of the seven installations remaining. The popcorn guy who was there from the beginning also left that same day, so now IMAX 2 is cancelled. The Vive Focus standalone VR headset is getting six DOF controllers in the near future as dev kits start to ship out. So if you own one of those, I'd say sell it and save up for a quest. 
Unless you hate Facebook, in which case I'd say just pretend it's not Facebook, that makes Quest and get a Quest anyways. Steam VR has finally gotten its own version of Oculus's brain smoothing technique called motion smoothing, which allows programs with more modest hardware to run higher spec games without dropping as many frames, resulting in a smoother overall experience. Kickstarters who back the STEM controllers are now getting refunds as the company behind the tech has finally admitted those things just aren't going ahead. Surprise, motherfucker! It's not really though, but it is a bit of a shame as full body tracking actually sounded quite nice. And Nvidia's Turing GPUs, which you can hear all about in this episode of the Grid VR, are getting a new shading capability called Texture Space Shading, which improves performance in VR by removing the need for GPUs to compute identical shader calculations twice, particularly useful for objects in the distance that don't really change from frame to frame. If you want to read more on any of this, as always, all the links are in the description. And finally, Go and Gear VR now have a feature that lets you record a couple of minutes of VR footage and report people with proof of abusive behaviour and language. So fuck's sake, don't fucking sh** on this show and VR publicly. In fact, I'm walking out of the room, so the grid too is cancelled. And this week on the VR, you can help support Support this channel by grabbing exclusive rewards on Patreon, and if you like this video, then that like button, have a day in the comments below, and hit the XO logo, subscribe if you wanna. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.